Let's continue with uh, other technologies. Let's speak about assets. What is the scope of security? What are we trying to protect? It's going to be assets, which is anything of value to an organization. That means it can be a computer, it can be a specific por portion of a computer, it can be a network device, it can be a, a specific text file, it can be a PDF file, it can be, um, what else? Um, a physical, so it can be any physical, the, the, yes, it can have any, any kind of a, a physical uh, aspect or any kind of electronical uh, aspects. It, it all depends. It's something which the organization owns and is, it has a value to the organization. And then we're going to see that in the end, the organization has to protect and is going to protect which assets. Because not all assets are equally uh, the same. Uh, not all assets are equally the same from the from the value point of view, which means not all of them should be protected with the same uh, the, in the same way at the same let's say level. And each each asset is going to be vulnerable to different kind of attacks or different kind of exploits. So in order to 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 provide the appropriate level of security to an asset that the enterprise the organization owns which means by providing the security level, a secu specific security level to an asset, we're actually lowering the risk level. So if initially, if, if the risk level is, if the risk level, so if the risk level can be zero to 100%, then by implementing security, specific security technologies, to guard or defend or to protect specific assets, then the risk level, is going to remain to be 10%. So the remaining risk, the risk level remains to be 10% or 20% or 30%, for example. And now, in order to be able to provide appropriate level, as I was saying, we have to identify uh, the assets or classify them. And now the assets are classified into into categories by each organization individually. There is there is not a, a let's say a, a common standard for classifying assets. It is known uh, to like for example common private common private organizations to classify their assets into specific categories like into public, sensitive, private, and confidential. Where for example, if you take let's say organization, uh, a, a, an asset which is publicly, which is classified as, pub as public, which mean, that means it's like a publicly available resource. Like for example, take a company and their website. Uh, data which resides on their website, most of it is gonna be uh, identified or classified as being public. Because it is publicly available, which means that it doesn't matter who gains access to the data of, of, of on that uh, web server. It is actually meant to be uh, reachable and available to every user who, ac who actually uh, is gonna be is gonna in the end access uh, that data in there. Then we have sensitive data. Like for example, sensitive data, if you have in that web portal, in, in the, let's say in that, uh, web, on that web server, you offer both authenticated and unauthenticated pages. For example, so for the users to get access to specific data on that web server, they, let's say, have to be authenticated. Like for example, let's take Gmail or Yahoo Mail or any kind of webmail. You, you use a browser, you open up, you put in the URL to access Gmail or, or Yahoo Mail or any kind of webmail, and you, then you authenticate with your username and password. Then, for example, in that case, whatever is accessed, so that whatever the content, the inbox and the outbox, the content of your mailbox, that could be considered to sensitive. So it's not public. The service is public, the Gmail service is public, the webmail service is public, is reachable to everybody, but then based on each user's credentials, each user gets access to its own, uh, to, to its own data, to its own mailbox. So that could be considered to be sensitive, for example. 
then we have so that's going to be that's going to be for, so the the publicly available data but it can be considered to be public which is unauthenticated access from from anybody on the internet or sensitive which means it requires some kind of authentication and then each user gets access to its own data then we can have something which is called uh, private so private means it that's going to be like for example if, if we took google with their web services that's going to be like a, a resources which reside on privately available web servers so for example data on web servers which are not reachable from the internet they are reachable only from the inside of the network it means that can that can be classified for example as private data so it should not be available to the to the public by any means it's reserved only for internal use for employees like that could be as i was saying whatever uh, whatever is available on an internal web server for example company security procedures and policies that's not something to be publicly available either to be classified as public or as sensitive it is a private classification of data and then can be confidential which confidential could be if we took Google as an example um, could be something which is clearly private but also being confidential it means that it has to be available only to very specific users and only in very specific environments like for example let's speak about the financial reports the annual financial reports um, not those one because those are publicly available let's speak about for example the employee salaries that's confidential data so that is first of all private but private means it's accessible by a lot of users it's it's a special it's a special type of private data private asset which means it is it is going to be um, restricted to be accessed only by specific users and only in specific conditions like as i was saying the the the, the salaries employ the employee salaries are only known uh, are only let's say published in the in a specific system which only the financial department can access and only certain people can access that in there and actually visualize back and forth the the salaries so that's that could be classified as confidential and because it's confidential maybe that system also offers some kind of a, of added security like data in transit is going to be encrypted authenticated protected from for integrity and all of those use cases likewise if we take a common public organization in general they could classify their assets into what is called unclassified which is clo close to what is what meant public on the private organization so it's data that basically they really don't care to call it that way it's whatever it's public but it's they don't even put in the resources to classify it and and see if there is any value to the data it's unclassified it can be confidential data and then secret and then top secret so for example on on um, public organizations like governments what is called top secret a lot of times uh, it only it's not only available it's not even available in electronic format so what is called top secret either it's an information which is only spoken but never written for example or it's information which it is written but on a physical piece of paper it's like a document but it's not available electronically for example because to to steal a physical document you need a hundred percent physical access to the location that document is stored so you need physical access and you need the tools or you need the tools available to open up the lockers that guard that data from being accessible it's going to be like within a container or a safe which is of course guarded by a lot of security measures like surveillance cameras uh, pen code uh, maybe different uh, keys to multiple keys to be used at the same time so like for example to open up the door or a top secret um, document is being stored multiple users have to show up at the same time with their own keys and use the keys at the same time for example like that's how uh, nuclear uh, launch bombing works 
There is no, there is no way you, the, the, you're going to allow one individual to be able to use its key, its security tool, and activate launching a, a atomic bomb against uh, whatever other country, right? So it has to be multiple people w that they have to agree, yes, you're going to do this, and then they're going to use their, their keys to actually validate and instruct the system to launch the atomic bomb, for example. So that's going to be top secret. Well, secret is going to be something which could optionally be uh, in uh, available in the electronic format, but because it's it's classified as secret, it has to be uh, very strictly guarded by a lot of security measures to make sure it's not being leaked out. Of course, there are other organizations that can choose their own classification, uh, let's say categories. They can either make use of this commonly well-known, well-used, well-known ones, or they can come in there and you know make up on, make up their own categories to define assets, and then based on the category of the asset, they're going to end up uh, uh, they're going to end up having a certain value. Because the, the classification of, of assets not only uh, tells, uh, based on the classification of, of an asset, an asset has to, is going to end up being accessible to certain users in certain, like the, the whole internet, or only employees, or only certain employees, is going to end up being accessible in certain ways like unauthenticated, like public web services, or authenticated, like private web services, and then it can the transmission can be encrypted, authenticated, it can provide also integrity. So based on the classification of the data, the more, let's say, valuable the data is, the more stricter security measures and controls are going to be implemented, and the Basically, uh, the more uh, stricter and uh, and more advanced technologies, it means more costs are going to be involved to deploy those technologies to safeguard the data. And it makes sense. Like the more valuable the data is, you you uh, you can actually end up investing more money to guard a highly sensitive uh, data in there. Like from the government point of view, there are some some data which are classified as top secret, which which are kind of like um, their value. It it's it has to do their value is gonna decrease over years. Like for example, if a government uh, has decided to you know take a specific action. Um, I uh, know against specific organizations, and they classify that action as top secret with the plan of, of acting. Then that's going to be classified as top secret, for example, for 50 years, or 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 100 years, or 30 years, which means nobody who was involved in that act and they they are aware of what happened. Nobody is allowed to speak about it or say anything about what happened in there. And likewise, that act is like the, the act which was signed is like it's going to be safeguarded so that nobody can open it up for like for those 30 or 50 years. It's there to be uh, to be accessible only after the asset has lost its value. So it's different different categories of classifications of data. And I gave this example to also show you that uh, a specific asset can be classified um, as a, in a specific category, but it can stay in that category for a specific amount of time. Afterwards, it can actually lose all of its value or it can become less valuable. Like as I was saying, a top secret data can stay, can be top secret for 50 years and then can be publicly available. It, it's going to change it, its category at that point. As I was saying, criteria for asset classification varies a lot, like liability, um, or replacement costs, or as I was saying, age of the of the asset or the value of the asset, and all of those can be, can change, uh, especially as time goes. So there are some assets that their values changes over time, or there are some assets uh, that their um, their values remains the same um, across the entire, let's say. Um, lifetime of an organization. Like for example, as I was saying, like the employee salaries. 
So clearly, the employee status will be will be classified as confidential as long as a specific organization exists, because they're going to always have employees, and that's confidential data. And because employees come and go, it's still employees. So that uh, that asset is going to be classified as confidential at all times. Its its um, its value and its classification doesn't change across as time goes.